Hello, good evening and welcome to Joy News Prime live from our studio here in Accra. We're live on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 125 and around the world on myjoyonline.com. Coming up this hour, Chief Justice comes under fire from the NDC after the Supreme Court proceeded to hear a case filed against approving President Akufuado's ministerial nominees ahead of the case against the LGBTQI plus bill which was filed earlier. The application clearly was, was frivolous and there ought not to be any um, manipulation of what went on in court. Even Parliament itself was opposed to the application. We have a detailed account from a busy and dramatic day in the Supreme Court where the Apex Court dismissed the application as frivolous and an abuse of the court process. Also, members of Locked Up Investment Forum class with security at the Finance Ministry as personnel prevent the protesters' entry to ministry uh, to see the Finance Minister over their Locked Up investments. Is it your minister who said we shouldn't come or you are saying, what's, what's, what's the authority for you to lock the place? That some people, we are not saying all of us are coming. Ten people are coming to meet the minister because we have written to the minister. On protesters on how the development is affecting their financial and health needs. Right now, I have to take my medication every other day. I can't afford to take it every day. I have to space it out. You can't live comfortably like you have planned to do. Now, no end in sight to the teacher strike as meeting between the three teacher unions and government and in stalemate. Right, so that negotiation can also continue and teacher unions not obliging, I think. Clearly, it's something that is surprising to us. Uh, the Chief Justice, Getri Tokunu, has come under fire from the opposition NDC who are alleging Political bias in how cases before the Supreme Court are scheduled for hearing. The NDC is slamming the Chief Justice and the court for hearing their MP, Roxy Nelson, the final post case against the approval of some ministerial nominees ahead of another suit against the controversial anti LGBTQI plus bill passed by Parliament, which was the first to be filed. These two cases are the, at the centre of the impasse between the President and Parliament. We'll hear from the NDC shortly. First, here is a report by a member of our legal affairs desk from the Supreme Court, where the Apex Court dismissed the injunction application filed by the NDC MP on the approval of ministerial nominees. The five-member panel of the Supreme Court was presided over by the Chief Justice herself, Gertrude Isaba Tokuno. The other members of the panel were Justice Kinsley Kumsen, Justice Maria Mawusu, Justice Amadou Tanko, and Justice Yao Dakun Asari. The court described the application filed by the NDC MP as frivolous and, a, and an abuse of the court process. After this judgment of the Supreme Court had been handed down, the Attorney General, Godfrey Yabo Adami, said he was excited about what had happened and that, in fact, he did not agree with members of the public who sought to suggest that the Supreme Court were handling this case especially and not paying much attention to the case involving the anti-LGBTQ injunction application filed by lawyer and journalist Richard Delasky. The application clearly was, was frivolous and there ought not to be any um, manipulation of what went on in court. Even Parliament itself was opposed to the application. On, on the cases that have been heard, there are those who have taken the view that some cases were filed two weeks prior to this case being filed and the Supreme Court has proceeded to deal with it. The Chief Justice himself has raised issues about persons not prosecuting their own cases. Well, what do you make of it? Yes, I mean, as, as I said, it's most unfortunate that persons will file up and processes before the court and then and fail to take an interest in it. On record um, in Parliament, it's, it's a letter that I wrote to the Speaker asking him to reconsider his decision and all. So I expect Parliament, after having come to the Supreme Court, to oppose this application to also um, reconvene and, and deal with the, the matter relating to the approval of the, of the ministers. I asked the Attorney General specifically if he's interested in getting that injunction that has been filed to stay the hands of President Ekufuado on the anti-LGBTQ bill and whether or not he'll be filing for the Supreme Court 
to actually deal with the matter expeditiously. He said that he does not intend to prosecute the case for the, the, the person who had filed this case in, 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 this, in this suit, Richard Delasca. Is the, the position that if Richard Sky does not prosecute this case, the Supreme Court is not going to hear it, and the, 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 the hand of the president is going to be stayed on this bill up until Richard Sky decides that he takes an, he takes an interest in this matter. Well, if, if Richard Sky does not prosecute the matter, the application will, will be dismissed. <laughs> the process he has filed in court will be dismissed. Yeah. Yes, but, so, so and, but, hold on, hold on. I think that the duty to fix the date for hearing rests in the registry of the, of the Supreme Court. And I do not understand where this business of people actually um, scrutinizing when applications are faced for hearing or why these applications are for hearing even came from. The Back in the days, if we file an application in the Supreme Court of Ghana, it takes even three months for you to have a date for hearing. It is only after a party has made an application for an expeditious determination of the, of the process that the matter will come up for hearing. And indeed, in, in the record, we show that this particular case, for the record, it must be indicated that I specifically applied for an expedition determination of the, of the matter. I applied for an expedited hearing of the application. So it is not the Supreme Court of Ghana uh, picking and choosing which applications to hear and not to, not to hear. Any party to any matter, back in the days I used to do it even when I was in opposition. You that, have an expedited hearing uh, in the Richard Sky case. I, I, so I, I think you should ask the plaintiff. Well, the plaintiff is the one who instituted the action. The plaintiff is the one who instituted the action and the plaintiff ought to um, bear the responsibility for, 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 for the conduct of the, of the matter. I'm not going to conduct the case for a plaintiff. Another big issue in court today had to do with the appearance of the NDC MP and his lawyers. Neither the MP nor his lawyers were in court today. There was no explanation as to why they were not in court. But the bailiff of the Supreme Court was put under oath and he gave some facts to the Supreme Court. He said he went to the law firm of the lawyer for Roxanne Nelson, the family, well, that's it. that is Nick Papu Samuaro, to serve on him some court documents, including the hearing notice for today. And that when he did, in fact, go to the law firm to serve these documents on him, he did not meet the lawyer himself. He met one person called Na, who told the bailiff that lawyer Nick Papu Samuaro had categorically instructed her not to receive any application, any court processes, any document from any person whatsoever and that he did indeed proceed to lay the documents on the table, which would have meant that the documents have not been truly served. The Attorney General had been pressing for the, 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 the lawyer to be referred for disciplinary proceedings, and that he described that as a, the highest form of disrespect that any person can do to the Supreme Court. For a lawyer who has filed an application in the matter to direct a rejection of the affidavit of position that has been filed by the other side, I mean, it's, it's really, for me, gross professional misconduct. With as it may, uh, the court proceeded to deal with the matter, and, and, and that is it. Um, I think that was very unfortunate, especially as the same counsel was in the same day filing processes in the Supreme Court of Ghana. Earlier in the morning, he was rejecting processes from the Supreme Court of Ghana, and then in the afternoon, he proceeded to file uh, processes in the same Supreme Court of Ghana. And I think the processes of the highest court of the Republic ought to be respected. The dignity and authority of the court always ought to be protected and respected by all counsel. And that is the point I sought to make in court. But the court, led by the Chief Justice, said they will take some action on that at a later date. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante, the Supreme Court. Now, the NDC has reacted strongly against the decision by the Supreme Court to hear this case ahead of the Richard Delaskai case against the anti-gay bill. Let's share with you details of the statement the party released, uh, you know, after this case was called in the Supreme Court. Now, um, I mean, if, if you look at this statement, the NDC is saying that they do not understand why a case that was filed before this case, that is the Richard Delaskai case, has not, be, you know, um, has not been called, but the, that of the firm of has been called, and they are alleging uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, they, they are saying that the chief justice is not being fair to them. They, 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 they put that in a lot of statements. But the attorney general, Godfrey Eboa Dami, has been reacting to this on Top Story on Joy. But we'll share with you details of, of, of the NDC statement uh, that they released. Now, it says the National Democratic Congress, NDC, has become aware of the decision by the chief justice of Ghana to uh, list the case of Roxin Nelson Dafiamapo 
uh, versus the Speaker of Parliament and Attorney General um, the, uh, for hearing on Wednesday, 27th March, 2024. Uh, they go ahead to say that uh, uh, if you look at what, what uh, I mean, the, the fact that the Richard Delasky case was called before this, that should have come before this one, uh, um, and therefore they do not know why this happened. The party says in their own words, quote, the NDC is intrigued by the listing of the Dafiamapo case for hearing ahead of the case of Richard Delasky versus the Parliament of Ghana and the Attorney General. It is interesting to note that Richard Delasky filed his writ of sermons in the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of the Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill 2024 on the 5th of March 2024. So they give a date they as to when uh, Richard Delasky filed his case, and therefore they expected that this one will be called before that of the Fiamapo. They go ahead to say this was almost two clear weeks before Honorable Rocks in the Fiamapo filed his writ of sermons on the 18th March 2024, challenging the constitutionality of uh, you know uh, uh, the appointment there. Now, this was almost two clear weeks before the Honorable Rocks in Nelson the Fiamapo filed his writ of sermons. They're challenging the constitutionality of the latest ministerial nominations by the president. So the party has been reacting to a lot of these issues. But the Attorney General, Godfrey Ebu Adami, has been back again in the public space defending or reacting to this development and especially the response by the NDC. He's been speaking on Top Story on Joy FM a short while ago. Um, yeah. I have agreed to speak to you because of the ignorance that is being put out there. A lot of ignorant and misleading information is being put out there. And I consider it my duty as a minister for justice to correct this because indeed it has a grave implication for the administration of justice in the country. Ghana's judiciary has a very solid reputation out, out there within the Commonwealth. It's one of the most respected institutions in the justice delivery system in the Commonwealth of nations. And for that matter, wrong impressions that are bandied about to solve the middle integrity are of concern to me, especially when they are unfounded and premised on false on false counts. The issue is simple. As was explained by the lawyer we spoke to earlier on, no date has been fixed for the hearing of the application by Dr. Mapo. And for that matter, the issue of agreement of time doesn't even arise at all. Edwin Tomaku doesn't even understand <laughs> the workings of the rules of court. An application for agreement of time for hearing of the matter comes in when you have time, a setting or fixed time, fixed for the hearing of the relevant process we're talking about. And you seek to bring the date for it. That is when we talk about abridgment of time. You are abridging the time, bringing it forward. When no date has been fixed, it is absolutely the duty of a party interested in the matter to cause the matter to be faced for hearing. So I certainly wrote a letter to Her Ladyship, the Honorable Chief Justice of the Republic, asking for an expedited hearing of the matter and asking for an early date for hearing. That's a letter on record, as is done by all practitioners where they are sought. All practitioners who know the workings and rules of court. So, and, and I you know did this in the absence? That indeed, I have done this many, many times. 15, 16 years ago, I made the first application, about maybe eight years ago, to the, I remember the then Chief Justice Aqua. I sent an application to him asking for an expedited hearing of a matter. He granted it. Even recently, in the Supreme Court case 2011, that time, Edith Tomaclo was my student at the Ghana School of Law. <laughs> it's a matter of record. Now, move away from that, uh, members of the Locked Up Investment Holders Forum have today clashed with security at the Finance Ministry as personnel prevent the protesters' entry to the ministry. The group marched to the Finance Ministry after meeting Governor of the Bank of Ghana to deliberate over how to retrieve their monies locked up with some financial houses and microfinance companies. My colleague James Avaji has all the drama in the following report. This morning, uh, members of the Locked Up Investment Forum have actually hit the street uh, to protest, to put pressure on the Bank of Ghana to help retrieve their locked up funds with some financial houses and savings and loan companies across the country. These are persons who have invested with uh, corporate finance uh, entities, some even invested with church corporate entities. All of them 
are saying that their money is over the period, have been locked up with us entities without being able to retrieve them. They started a walk actually from the premises of the NDK financial company around the Accra Sports Stadium and heading towards the Bank of Ghana to present their, uh, 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 their petition to governor of the BOG. And so that's what is happening. If you look on some of the placards, they have the Bank of Ghana. Don't kill investors with your poor supervision. Others are saying that the Bank of Ghana should wake up and do its job. Others say we want our money back. We worked for it. We can try and have a conversation with some of them to know what exactly what their plight are. But we would want to have a conversation with you. Uh, tell us about your own situation with this host savings and loan companies and your lockup funds. To be honest with you, right now I have to take my medication every other day. I can't afford to take it every day. I have to space it out. You can't live comfortably like you have planned to do. And it is, it is not right at all. It is so unfair. This is that we're going to the BOG uh, to terminate the protest. Why are we here at the Kwame Nkrumah? Well, according to the police, they have declared uh, uh, those areas as security zone. You recall that when the minority uh, in parliament held their protest, they stopped them at some point. And I'm told, the police told me it was at this point that they stopped them. So we don't want to force the police to go against their own rule. So we're even going to be at the roadside there, but they realize that the sun is too much. So they pleaded with these people to allow us here so that we can rest under this uh, 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 shade. So but, but was that the original plan? Yes. The original plan was for you to come here? To, to be at the roadside there, could converge there, and then wait for our leaders to go and come. But now they have allowed us to come inside here so that the sun we shall be protected by the sun. There are some key highlights in that petition and the proposal. The proposal as we have proposed two methods or approaches. Either you give them money, these institutions that are not able to operate, NDK financial services, SDC financial services, SIC life uh, savings and loans and bond savings and loans give them support, find some money. We have said that they should be talking to the uh, development partners to allow them to even use part of the stability fund to do this kind of exercise. Give them some money, which can cover about 20% of investors' funds there, so that investors get about 20% of their funds. The rest we are prepared to convert it into, let's say, a four or three year bond. And we are also prepared to even convert the balance into equity. Leadership of the group was dispatched to go into that meeting with the governor. They returned hours later to tell the rest of the team that the BOG has agreed to their proposal. The conclusion that we had from that meeting is that the Bank of Ghana was prepared to revoke the licenses of these institutions. But they must first be assured by government that government has made provision for the payment of these investors' funds before they revoke, in short. So they are dealing with government for government to provide those uh, monies for that. The government has not been able to do that as of now. So we too, when we go to the minister, that's the message we are going to send to the minister. The protesters then marched on the streets to the finance ministry to meet the minister. But at reaching we the ministry, the gate were shot at the protesters, resulting in anger and fury. Otherwise, you'll be coming here every day. Is it your minister who said we shouldn't come, or you are saying, what's, what's, what's the authority for you to lock the place? That Some people, we are not saying all of us are coming. Ten people are coming to meet the minister because we have written to the minister. And you are saying what? It, the minister is not there. Master, you don't need to be working here. It means you don't even understand organization. You don't understand organization. You shouldn't be here. You that should be fired. The first if I want to meet the minister and it's not there, then to be a human being who will represent the minister. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you are employed here. Hello. You shouldn't be here because you don't understand. Yeah, you don't understand. To say, to say minister is not there and so what? The, the minister is not there. There is nobody in this. I'm, say, I'm, I'm announcing this to the whole, the whole world. After the back and forth, some members 
were allowed in. They came back minutes later to inform the media that they couldn't meet the finance minister. Not Ghanaians. Are we? Are we not Ghanaians? Are we any Ghana for? I am paying for the Ababedu. Oh, be anti be anti. Any. Yeah, but in two weeks time. Oh, my anti. Any. My yeah. That how copy say. Yeah, but you yes, sir. Ghana yes, safe for investment. And yes, safe for investment. Yeah, you yes, sir. Convener of the group, Dr. Iduana Nyenje, said they will return to the ministry every two weeks until they meet the minister. James Savage's report for Joy News. Well, two other stories now. And no end in sight to the teacher strike as meeting between the three teacher unions and government ends in a stalemate. Now, this is as a result of the teacher's refusal to call off the industrial action before further negotiations for the outstanding demand continues today. Yesterday's meeting ended with three out of their nine demands being met by government according to the Fair Wages uh, or the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. The requirement for the negotiation of the six outstanding demands was for the NAGRAT, NAT and CCT to suspend the action. My colleague Kenneth Jesse was at the Employment and Labor Relations Ministry where the meeting took place and joins me in studio now with more Kenneth. So, what was the reaction by these teacher unions uh, when the meeting was called? Well, they appeared quite disappointed uh, after the meeting. They gave no audience to the media, but from their demeanor and posture, you could see that they were not happy with the outcome. It was more like two hours of nothing because the meeting uh, lasted for about two hours, a, a closed door meeting. I mean, and then as you mentioned earlier, it, it, it couldn't go on because the uh, part of the agreement by the National Labor Commission yesterday was not on it today, so mm. the meeting could not go up. Mm, interesting. What did government say after the meeting? Right, so uh, government was represented by a whole lot of people, including the Minister of Education, Dr. Duchum himself, uh, but uh, uh, the Director of uh, Grievances and Negotiations at the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, that is uh, Professor Charles Adabo, upon after you know the meeting spoke to the media and did indicate that indeed the nlc gave the uh, uh, teacher unions an ultimatum that if you want us to fulfill the remaining six of your demands you have to call off your strike mm -hmm. before you come back to the negotiation table with government to negotiate again but that did not happen so mm -hmm. They're saying that government is ever ready to meet them again mm. if they, you know, decide to call off their strike. So until then, mm. it's, it, it's a, a ending in stalemate as it did. Mm. Three teacher bodies, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, as well as the Concerned Teachers, CCT, declared a nationwide strike on the basis of various issues they've been raising uh, that government needed to attend to. So for the past one week, teachers have not been in the classroom. Meanwhile, the students or the peoples in the public basic schools across the country have been going to the schools, but we know teachers in the classrooms. Today, they are all emerging here at the National Labor Commission as we speak. Leadership of the three teacher unions are currently in a closed door meeting with the National Labor Commission trying to arrive on a consensus to see how the concerns of the teacher bodies can be addressed. Well, apologies for the mess up there. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more on this particular story and more here. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. Now, let's take you to back to our first story, which involves the NDC um, getting into some, some debate with the uh, Chief Justice for uh, calling the case of Dafia Mapo, uh, which, uh, who brought an injunction against the confirmation of the President's ministerial nominees there, ahead of that of Richard De La Sky. Now, in this debate, one thing that came up was that I mean, when the court bailiff went to the lawyer for Nelson Roxy Dafiamapo, Nick Papo Samoa Ado, to file or to, uh, to uh, give him the sermons, they, according to the bailiff, the officers at that law firm decided not to receive it. Now, we have 
a CCTV footage from that office. You remember in the whole discussion, Nick Papo Samuado has, has refuted that allegation. He says there was no way they had told the court bailiff not to serve them. Now, uh, what you're watching on your screens now is a CCTV footage of when the bailiff came into that office, uh, uh, you know, to file the sermon. So, I mean, this is to either confirm or uh, deny, uh, you know, what is already in the media. Nick Papo, lawyer Nick Papo Samuado says, there was never that occurrence where our officers, knowing what the law says, ever uh, prevented the, the officer from the court from filing that law, law court on, on us. But, but uh, I mean, uh, the allegation is that they, they did. Now, we have the CCTV footage now. Let's listen in. Well, so there you have it, CCTV footage from the office of lawyer Nick Papo Samoa Ado. It helps shape the discussion about this whole issue from the Supreme Court. Now, away from that, if you are a private candidate receiving this year's basic education certificate examination, take note because your questions will differ from those taking the examination for the first time. This new development is as a result of the introduction of the Common Core syllabus for both the junior and senior high schools. Head of Public Affairs at WIAC, John Capi, explains that the decision to vary the question is to ensure fairness in the examination. Actually, nothing different from that. It's just a name, all right? And then the content has changed a little. Um, there are a few things that have been added to some of the uh, subjects. Some of the subjects have been changed. There have been a uh, combination of subjects as well. So um, for those who are in GHS3 right now, uh, it is uh, on record that they started with this particular common core syllabus from the first year. And so they have been uh, appropriately schooled and prepared for the examination this year. Now the reason we are asking the private candidates, or we are testing the school candidates on the common core and the private candidates on the old syllabus is the fact that for those who are rewriting, they were taught in the old syllabus. They didn't have the opportunity of being schooled in the new syllabus or the common core syllabus, and therefore it would be inappropriate test-wise. It is not uh, feasible for you to test them on the new curriculum. That is why we have that disparity. Indeed, it's the first time that we are going that way. Now, WIAC has also warned parents and schools against registering ineligible candidates for the exams. As well. Candidates are advised to contact their schools or visit the WIAC website for the accurate timetable. Candidates should refrain from downloading timetables from unverifiable websites. 
eligibility for school examinations. As the name implies, the WAS for school candidates and BEC for school candidates are available to students in the third or final year of regular senior and junior high school only. It is therefore against the rules and regulations of the examination for schools to engage in the following activities. One, register students who have not been enrolled in senior or junior high schools from their first year and progress through to the third year and do not have the required continuous assessment records. The grading for the school examinations is 70% external examination score and 30% continuous assessment score. If for some reason some students are transferred from one school to another, they should have evidence of the necessary continuous assessment or cumulative records. Two, register students who are not in the final year or are not bona fide students of the school in question. Reports reaching us indicate that students from some public schools are enticed with the assurance of obtaining excellent grades and are therefore moving to some of the private schools to register for the examination. Now, the electricity company of Ghana has started an exercise to check on various power transformers across the country to identify and fix faults that can help sustain power. ACG's integrity checks on the transformers will help identify actual loads and others that need upgrades upon reaching their full capacity. The company says the upgrade of transformers and fault checks will contribute to keeping the lights on. Nana Boache Yadom has more. Electricity Company of Ghana began a transformer upgrade within its operational areas identified to be at full capacity due to high demand. The checks by the power distributor identified 630 transformers within several communities across the country as faulty. This has led to transformer checks to determine faults that might be contributing to recent power cuts. Ashanti West ECG PRO Benjamin Inchi says the checks on ground mounted and pole mounted transformers are to determine overloads for replacement. So as we speak, you can see our team, what they are doing is when they visit the transformer, they will check the integrity of the transformer to see if all the fuses are intact, the bolts are not, and also they will pick their load readings on this transformer. This will enable us to know the actual load on each transformer and also get to know the transformer that may be reaching its capacity so that we'll put measures in place to upgrade the existing transformer or do what we call an injection such that if the transformer is 200 kV and it is getting to its full capacity, we'll try to upgrade it to 315 kV to prevent any overload in the nearest future. Mr. Encher indicated that upon identifying faulty transformers, the exercise will contribute to efforts to sustain power. Once we identify a transformer that is getting to its capacity, what we do is that we put measures in place to replace the transformer by bringing a bigger transformer or should I say upgrading it. So let's say if the transformer is 200 kV, that is its capacity. We will not wait for it to exceed its capacity before we do the replay because this exercise will let us know all the load readings on each phase. And once we sum it up, we will know the actual load on that transformer. Then we can put measures in place to upgrade it for maybe 200 kV to 315 kV. So this, once we upgrade a transformer to a much bigger capacity, we can accommodate any load that is coming on board. And this will enable us keep the lights on to prevent low voltage and power fluctuations. Because once the transformer has enough room to accommodate more customers, power supply will be stable as well. Benjamin Entry admonished customers to desist from tempering with the distribution transformers, but rather channel their concerns to the ECG for redress. As you know, once our underground cables are terminated onto the transformer, we expect that we cover it, one for safety reasons. So if it's well covered, nobody will go and touch the cable. But once the transformer, the plate is removed, the cables will be exposed to the weather itself. So if it is raining, the rain goes direct onto the cable. If any kid is moving around and he sees the cable, we would like to touch it, and this might end up in a bad way. So all we are urging our customers is that let us protect our industry, especially the fuses that people are stealing. As well. So once we're able to come together to protect these agents to listen, power supply will be stable in the Ashanti region as well. For Joe News, Nana Boche Dankwe Yadom Kumas. Now let's return to our earlier story where the teachers uh, who are on strike are not going to go back to the classrooms anytime soon because their negotiation with government ended in a stalemate. This is as a result of the teachers' refusal to call out the industrial action before further negotiations for the outstanding 
demands continues. Now, yesterday's meeting ended with three out of the nine demands being met by government, according to the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. The requirement for the negotiation of the six outstanding demands was for NAGRA, NAT, and CCT to suspend the action. But the teacher union say they will not do that, and government has been speaking to that. Thank you very much. No, but were you disappointed with them not calling off this track? Obviously, um, you were there yesterday. Indeed, NLC is um, a state institution mandated to do, do such engagement. And therefore, if they have given the directive that um, call off the strike so that negotiations can also continue and teacher unions not obliging, I think that clearly is something that is surprising to us. I mean, the, the biggest casualties in this is the students who, uh, for example, the JHS3 students, they have about three, three months to write the BEC and all that. They are all being affected in this. Don't you at least consider them in these negotiations? So that is why in the wisdom of uh, the Labour Commission, they directed that they should call off the strike, get back to the classrooms and teach for the sake of um, our kids so that we can also continue with the engagement. So long as they don't call the strike, you are also not going to... Indeed, you were here. They have promised that they are going to meet their respective council and to do the need for, for us to continue. And we have also indicated that if they are able to call off the strike, even today, we are going to engage them. But Thank sir, you. The concerns have been raised in the past that uh, the government side of the uh, divide has not been proactive because the teachers have always been beating the world drum. Going forward, how are you going to... Uh, I think that um, this particular issue was addressed in terms of the proactiveness. Indeed, we have shown that kind of uh, commitment to the teacher unions as um, uh, we indicated in our first press uh, conference, um, engagement with you, that uh, we engage them at off-site uh, meetings at Kuforidia, and that was the 19th, the 20th, and then the 21st, where we were able to agree on 10 out of the 16 items. So indeed, this should tell you that the government is committed. What are the six remaining uh, uh, cases? Uh, these are things that uh, is between um, us and the team. We cannot disclose some of these things because we have signed some rules of engagement with them. Thank you. This is still the journey. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with Showbiz. Do stay.